suppose I should thank you for releasing me. And welcome back. Um, let's talk to this gal. Um, who are you? How did you end up inside that thing? My name is Shiala. I serve. I, I served Matriarch Benezia. When she allied herself with Saren, so did I. Benezia foresaw the influence Saren would have. She joined him to guide him down a gentler path. But Saren is compelling. Benezia lost her way. He tricked her? Are you saying Saren can control minds? Benezia underestimated Saren, as I did. We came to believe in his cause and his goals. The strength of his influence is troubling. She tried to manipulate Saren, but in the end, her plan backfired. How is this possible? Asari matriarchs are among the most intelligent and powerful beings in the galaxy. How could one fall under Saren's control? Saren has a vessel, an enormous warship unlike anything I've ever seen. He calls it Sovereign. It can dominate the minds of his followers. Oh, that's nice. They become indoctrinated to Saren's will. The process is subtle. It can take days, weeks, but in the end, it is absolute. I was a willing slave when Saren brought me to this world. He needed my biotics to communicate with the Thorian to learn its secrets. Saren offered me in trade. I was sacrificed to secure an alliance between Saren and the Thorian. That's horrible. Saren's pretty quick to betray his own people. He was quick to betray the Thorian, too. After he had what he wanted, he ordered the Geth to destroy all evidence of his existence. Oh, that's Saren figured. knows you are searching for the conduit. He knows you are following his steps. He attacked the Thorian so you could not gain the cipher. What does it do? What's the cipher? And why did Saren need it? The beacon on Eden Prime gave you visions. But the visions are unclear, confusing. They were meant for a Prothean mind. To truly comprehend them, you must think like a Prothean. You must understand their culture, their history, their very existence. The Thorian was here long before the Protheans built this city. It watched and studied them. When they died, it consumed them. They became a part of it. I don't understand. Where is the cipher? How do I get it? The cipher is the very essence of being a Prothean. It cannot be described or explained. It would be like describing color to a creature without eyes. That would be hard. To understand, you must have access to endemic ancestral memory. A viewpoint spanning thousands of Prothean generations. I sensed this ancestral memory, the cipher, when I melded with the Thorian. Our identities merged, our minds intertwined. Such knowledge cannot be taught. It simply exists. Okay, there has to be some way. I need that knowledge to stop Saren. There is a way. I can transfer the knowledge from my mind to yours, as I did with Saren. Try to relax, Commander. Slow, deep breaths. Let go of your physical shell. Reach out to grasp the threads that bind us, one to another. Every action sends ripples across the galaxy. Every idea must touch another mind to live. Each emotion must mark another's spirit. Are we about we to are have all sex? connected. Every living being <laughs> united in a single glorious existence. Open yourself to the universe, Commander. Embrace eternity. Oh. Mm -hmm. That helps me in the slightest, honey. I have given you the cipher, just as it was given to Saren. The ancestral memories of the Protheans are a part of you now. Are you all right? What just happened? Don't worry, I'll be fine. I saw something. Whoa! It still didn't make any sense. Shepherds and You have been owl. given a great gift. Ooh. The experience of an entire people. It will take time for your mind to process this information. We should get you back to the ship, Commander. Medical needs to know about this. I'm sorry if you have suffered, but there was no other way. You needed the cipher. 
In time, it will help you understand the vision from the beacon. Okay. I'm gonna ask some questions. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Thorian? When the creature enveloped me, I became part of it. But I still don't truly understand it. So alien, so ancient. Its exact age is impossible to know. It measured time differently. 10,000 years of hibernation broken by a few frantic centuries of activity. Its mind was awesome, magnificent. It transcended all classification. And now it is gone. Just to point something out, that is the true meaning of the word awesome. There is something to be in awe of. When she says its mind was awesome, she means that she was in awe of it. Not that, dude, it was so awesome. <laughs> There's a, some comedian out there that has a whole thing about awesome that is hilarious. Don't tell me you feel sorry for that thing. The Thorin was a unique life form. A sentient being that lived for 50,000 years, maybe more. There is nothing even remotely like it in the known galaxy. I am grateful you saved me from a life of thraldom. Yet I cannot help but feel some sorrow for the loss of such a rare and remarkable creature. You know, in as much as that thing was terrifying and probably needed to be t put down, I think Sab feels the same way. She doesn't. She didn't want to be responsible for that thing's death. It sucks. Tell me more about this ship Saren has. Sovereign is alien. I do not know how it was built or where it comes from. Its design does not match that of any known spacefaring species. It dwarfs any vessel in the Citadel or Alliance fleets. Its weapons are devastating. Its defenses virtually impenetrable. With it, Saren believes he is unstoppable. It controls minds? You said Saren uses it to manipulate his followers. The indoctrination. There is an energy about Sovereign. You feel drawn to the ship. It makes Saren's arguments more persuasive, more compelling. Spend enough time in Sovereign's presence, and you will lose yourself. <laughs> That's good. There is no other way to explain it. That is fan-fucking-tastic. I want to know more about Benezia. Benezia was greatly respected among our people. A powerful biotic, even for an Asari. She was widely known as a teacher of philosophy and religion. She always sought the paths of peace and harmony. She joined with Saren because she hoped to turn him away from his path of destruction. That backfired. Instead, she became one of his most powerful allies. As I mentioned before, Matriarch Benezia underestimated Saren. Be sure you do not make the same mistake. Hmm. Good piece of advice. Uh, what can you tell me about Saren? What else can you tell me about Saren? <laughs> there is little I could tell you that you do not already know. He's powerful, he's charismatic, and he is dangerous. Once I followed him, blind to his true nature, but now I see he's leading the galaxy into an age of darkness and suffering. Uh, I want to ask personal questions. I already asked about the Thorian. Personal questions. <laughs> Excuse me. I want to know more about you. There is nothing remarkable about me. I was merely one of Matriarch Benezia's disciples. For nearly two centuries, I followed her, learning at her feet. When Benezia revealed her plan to join Saren, she gave her disciples a choice. Huh. Only those who were willing had to follow her. Many felt her plan was too dangerous. But I believed in her. I thought she could turn Saren away from his insanity. Instead, we joined him in it. Huh, alrighty. So what should I do with you, then? Now that you're free of the Thorian, what are you planning to do next? If you allow it... I would like to stay here with the colonists. They have suffered greatly, and I played a role in their suffering. I would like to make amends. Well, that it, it's a noble idea. And Sabrina is not the kind of person who's just going to kill somebody. If somebody can be saved, she'll go out of her way to save them, even if they might not necessarily deserve it. The fact that this Shiala lady has told her everything that she wanted to know also helps a little bit, you know, it's, it's, it has helped her, despite being even more confused than she was before, because Shiala didn't have to tell her anything, 
So that sounds like a noble idea. You go ahead and do that. I won't stop you. The colonists will need all the help they can get. They'll be happy to have you on their side. Thank you, Commander. May fortune smile upon you. Indeed. Did it. With the I Thorian did. gone, we can start rebuilding for ourselves again. And we're free of Exogeny's threats. We're back to being just a little nowhere Ow. colony. <laughs> I just hit Thank my you, Commander. Owie. I hurted myself. Oh, thanks again. That data will be very valuable once I get out of here. I'm not entirely sure I should have helped you. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm going to actually quick save this time. Yay! Did not quit the recording. Okay. And we're going to go back to the ship. I'm so glad I saved everybody. That's not easy. I had another character that I played for a little while um, while we were while I was offline for those two months. Um, played for a little while, and I tried saving all the colonists, and I, I kept having to go back and redo it. So, whoa, Jesus! Rex was flying. Okay. So yeah, it. I don't know where I'm going. Am I even going the right way? I am. Okay. So yeah, the fact that I saved all of those colonists perfectly on the first try, just... Wow. Absolutely excellent. I don't know where I am. Okay. And in case you haven't noticed, I get lost easily. Lots of lag. I don't really like Pharaohs much for that reason. Okay. I also have to get back into a Paragon state of mind because I've uh, been playing a Renegade recently, which isn't... It's a really emotionally taxing. <laughs> Stand by, shore party. Decontamination But at the same time, progress. it's like really scary fun. It's fun to be mean sometimes. Commander. Hi. You look... Hale, are you suffering any ill effects from the cipher? I feel strange. The cipher shook me up a bit. I might be able to help you. I am an expert on the Protheans. If I join my consciousness to yours, maybe we can make some sense of it. Didn't we already do this? Do it. Hurry. We don't have much time. I thought we already did this. This scene always confuses me. We already did Relax, this. Relax, Commander. Embrace eternity. Creepy as fuck. was incredible. All this time, all my research, yet I... I never dreamed. I am sorry. The images were so vivid. I never imagined the experience would be so... intense. You are remarkably strong-willed, Commander. Well, what you, you have been through, what you have seen, would have destroyed a lesser mind. Oh, you're too kind. Did you see anything? The beacon on Eden Prime must have been badly damaged. Large parts of the vision are... are missing. See, the data transferred into the commander's mind is incomplete. You must have seen something. I was able to interpret the data relayed through your vision. What was there, at least. But something was missing. That's what the cipher was Saren for. Saren must remember? have the missing information. Maybe he found another beacon. If we can find the missing data from your vision, I can... I can... Oh... I am sorry. The joining is exhausting. I should go to the medical bay and lie down for a moment. You okay? Dr. Chakwash should take a look at you. That will not be necessary. I just need some rest. Somewhere quiet. Go ahead. We're done here. Dismissed. Excuse me. I've sent off the Pharos report, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Sure, why not? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Mander. Exogeny should have told us about the Thorian. Yeah. It would have made your job much easier. You think? You might have been able to capture it for study instead of destroying it. <sighs> I don't think that would be a good idea. That wouldn't work. As much as Shepard does 
didn't want to destroy it because it was the last of its kind. It was a very, very dangerous creature, and, and it needed to be destroyed. So that wouldn't work, I'm sorry. Exogeny tried to study it. Look how that turned out. Exactly. Perhaps it's for the best, then. At least the colony was saved. Yeah, that. Of course it was saved. Shepard would go to any lengths to help a human colony. Okay. I help everyone. Being human had nothing to do with it. There was a solarium there, too. Admirable. <sighs> but sometimes specters have to make sacrifices. I hope you're willing to do that when the time comes. Goodbye, Commander. We will be waiting for your next report. I really wanted to disconnect from them at that point. That was just really uncalled for. Jackasses. Okay. Let's go talk to some people. See, the first time I did this, I recorded gameplay, got to about here. Why is my mouse not working? Recorded gameplay, got to about here, and the game crashed and I lost everything. And then I, I did it... I mean, that was after I had, I had hit um, stop recording instead of quick save. And then the second time I did it, I didn't... It didn't save anything. <laughs> I was like, really? I, did, I, got, I got like an hour's worth of recording with no sound. I was pissed. And then we had to move, so I wasn't able to do it again. So, hi, Caden. Loading screen, really? Do you have some time to talk now, Commander? Absolutely. Of course. Have a seat. We've played it pretty close to the book so far, but we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying. Try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have that happen to you, Shepard. Commander. Are you concerned for me? <laughs> this is a personal observation, Caden. I, uh, I, I don't want to step on anyone else's toes, especially if you're a... Uh, if I have misread your interests. My interests? All right, Alenko. Off the record, permission to speak candidly, cross my heart, and hope to die. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shepard's confused. Uh, Doctor Tassoni, ma'am. Huh? There's a lower deck rumor that she's uh, interested in you. It's oh. more than a source of Prothean data. She's a very interesting lady. Not to my uh, tastes, but uh, I never claim to be big on alien culture. Oh, are you jealous? You seem awfully worried about my personal affairs. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. I like being around you, but I I don't want to take up your personal time. It's not like that. Look, there's nothing between Liara and me. What's the real issue here, Caden? You're right. Sorry, it wasn't, uh... Liara's not my main concern. I'm not questioning any decision you've made, Shepard. Let me be clear about that. Okay. It's just my experience that once someone lets something slide, it tends to pick up speed. You get my meaning? Bad experience? Talk to me, Caden. You got a little black rain cloud sitting over your head. <laughs> I'll try to keep the deck dry. You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified. Because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track element zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Why couldn't we do it alone? Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link biotics and ESO. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own limbs. Ow. And their choice of teachers didn't help much. Experts, huh? The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think, asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. Why not Asari? The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. They're all based yes, around Yes, but the company culture. didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. Oh, okay. You had a bad teacher? Get your knuckles wrapped a few times, Lieutenant? Yeah, you could say that. Our instructor was a Turian by the name of Commander Vernus. To introduce himself, he liked to say, I was at the helm of the dreadnought that killed your father. <laughs> 
told him my dad wasn't in the war. He'd retired to Vancouver. My family had an inland home that matured to New Beachfront. Verna had it in for me after that. He cut corners, pushed hard. I mean, you either came out a Superman or a wreck. A lot of kids snapped. A few died. Yeesh. The point of all of this, I guess, is that when you cut corners, it's not always obvious who pays for it. Okay, so why tell me? So why are you telling me this? Is there something I can do to help you get over it? I'm 32, Shepard. You don't serve as long as I have without coming to terms with yourself. Well, good for 32. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help them. Try to keep them from making mistakes. Special, huh? Special, huh? <laughs> if I'm out of line, just say the word. Um, I'm interested, but not now. Now isn't the ideal time. But I want to talk about this, Caden. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. Okay. We'll, we'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. Oh, jeez. That's right. I have like three level ups I haven't done yet. Um. Let's see. Let's put two here in Vanguard. Um. Yeah. I can equip medium armor. Do an advanced shield boost. Let's get advanced marksman. And why not? We'll put some in left. Okay. I can wear medium armor. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Chakwas. Hello there, Liara. We have to talk. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You okay? You look much better. How are you feeling? For the second time. Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. Eh, yeah, she's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Um, tell me more about you. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. Yeah, we're short-lived. We don't have the luxury of time, and Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. Really? 150? That is true. At first I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. Intimidating? You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. Me? Why me? There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. He I know what, what you now? did during the Blitz. It was a remarkable display of courage and heroism. Sweetie, you could have just asked. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. Within reason. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Me? Or the Beacon? You're interested in me because of my visions. You just want to know more about the Protheans. I admit. Your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest, but it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard, but I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Delenko. Hold on a second, you're a female. You want a relationship with me? Even though we're both women? We Asari are monogendered, Commander. Male and female do not have any real meaning for us. We do, however, have maternal instincts, so perhaps we would fill what you consider a female role. 
I'm sorry if this is awkward for you, Shepard. I am only trying to be honest. I feel as if we share some type of connection. But none of this matters if you are already involved in a serious relationship with Lieutenant Elenko. Caden's special. I care about Caden. A lot. I thought so. Still, I feel as if there is also some attraction between us, Shepard. See, now, I'm playing Sabrina as somebody who, yeah, she's attracted to Asari, but she's not attracted to Liara. Because Liara just seems too sweet and innocent, and she's not really into that, you know? She's very, very sweet, yes, and she's very, very cute. The babbling thing is adorable, but... I'm sorry, I just want to be friends. I'm not interested in you in that way, Liara. This is very embarrassing for me, Commander. Please, let's talk about something else. I think I've already talked to her. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Goodbye, Liara, and I'm very sorry, sweetie. For what it's worth, her romance is pretty sweet. <laughs> I've only done it once. It was with a different character on a different computer. I don't actually have that save on this computer. I actually don't even think I have that achievement on this computer. Romancing somebody? Not yet. Come on. Loading screen. Let's go. Hi, Rexy. What do you want, Shepard? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. Yes. Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. Why leave? Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Really? What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared, one of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. What about you? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up. <laughs> to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. That makes sense. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. What about Jared? I take it the Warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. Uh-huh. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead laid bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. And you went. Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Your father? Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked. But we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. Uh, His men leapt oh, from the graves of our me. ancestors <laughs> like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. That sucks. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. See, you think you had a bad surprise. That is why I left, and that's why I'll never go back. Okay. You must have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard? Yes. I'd love to see that. I've got some 
unfinished business with my family. But that's all. Really? What kind of business? <sighs> Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. Okay. What's so important about this armor? I think I'm gonna end it it's after this. It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. That sucks. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus. A Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. Okay, well. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. We'll look for it and get it back, buddy. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system. But Commander, I want to be there when you find him. Good. So long, Rex. Good. Shepard. Alright, I'm going to end this episode here. It's been about 30 minutes. Um, thank you all for watching, guys. I'm Mega Shiny Object, and I'll see you in the next episode. Ciao.